Hey everyone, welcome back to another session of Planet Zoo in our Wonder World Zoo. I first want to mention that I am quite happy with the way that this has turned out so far. Obviously the entrance is still in the works. In fact, uh, I guess you could say that everything still has opportunity for improvement. But so far it looks pretty good. Um, I do want to do something to alleviate the time between break periods for each one of the vendors before I hire new ones. Uh, as of right now, I think we have something like a little over $5,000 to work with, so I don't want to go off and hire uh, excess vendors for the time being, but that is something that we'll definitely want to look into in the future. And of course, uh, I'm, I'm going to be setting up some more uh, trash and recycle bins. Um, I think what I want to do is eventually just take out all the blue bins and just use the conservation recycle bins uh, because I, I do get additional conservation points when the customers use them. So that's definitely something I want to do. Now right now I'm just checking to see what the customers think. They seem to really like being able to be in the Cayman exhibit. And one other thing as well, these exhibits, last time I spaced on which exhibits that I, ha I have currently, of course they're all in South America because this is the South America portion of the zoo. And I have the Brazilian Salmon Pink Tarantula, the Brazilian Wandering Spider, the Amazonian Giant Centipede, and the Bow Constrictor. Those were the four exhibits. And just look at how majestic that, uh, that came and looks. So I also decided to increase the animal life. So they don't age as quickly. I, I just boost it to maximum so that way we can enjoy each one of the animals for as long as possible. Because just by default, the animals age quickly and so it just makes things easier. I mean, and again, we could just enjoy the animals longer. So I think right here is where I decide it's a good idea to actually put another resting area. I've already had one alert earlier that some staff members uh, didn't ha have any available space to take a break. Um, also working on still doing some research and that's going to continue because again I haven't really done any South America animals in my previous practices in this game in franchise mode uh, and because I'm starting to get some more research going I can actually start uh, fiddling around with some improvements in the exhibit areas right now the centipede obviously I can add some logs to make them more happy with the layout of the exhibit. I think that's the only one I can do right now. Uh, so be doing some research on uh, on one of the other exhibits as well. The, the other nice thing about having another uh, bit of research on each one of the exhibits is that it will boost their uh, the overall education experience of each one of the customers. Of course there's also going to be improvements in breeding and whatnot and one and uh, the main thing that's really convenient when it comes to exhibits is all the offspring can be sold off and they and they tend to each one of the exhibits tends to uh, produce a lot of offspring so it's a good amount of funding so here we go i'm going to go ahead and put down a another uh, resting area for our employees and not only does it serve a function of, of having an extra space for our employees, but also alleviates the time that it takes for our vendors to uh, get to a resting spot so they can come back to work sooner so that way our customers aren't looking for something to drink so often. Um, I also experimented with the, the vending machines. I've used them in the past and they're really good, but it just it's just not the same. <laughs> Uh, they they don't get to the customers don't get to get get like condiments and whatnot so uh, I put them down temporarily because our vendors were on break so it was convenient but then I took them out uh, also 
one thing that I've, I've experienced is that having your vendors, your security guard, and your caretakers at top-notch training is crucially important. It's very vital because they just, uh, they just give you, uh, they just give the customers the best to, uh, and they don't get tired as quickly. There's several benefits to it. And of course, I would love to have our innkeepers and or our keepers and our vets and our our mechanics at uh, five star training as well but we'll deal with that later as funding comes in because right now we're we're a little low and i also just put down a couple of trees uh it's because it looks empty i'm going i actually have a really cool idea for the vending area for the e whole eating area and how uh, it will transition to the next exhibit, but I'm going to wait till later uh, because I'm still thinking about how I want to implement it. So it'll be a nice surprise for when I eventually get there. Now in this, in this episode, I can already tell you that uh, I do plan on putting two new exhibits. But first, I want to before I do that, I want to work on the work zones because that's going to be really vital as the zoo expands. Now typically I like to have one keeper for every exhibit so that way it could just be dedicated to that one. And yes, it's more expensive, but that's okay. I don't mind the extra expense if I don't have to risk having animals starving or malnutrition in some sort of way. Uh, so here we go with the first, uh, the first work zone. It's just obviously I only have one habitat for right now. Uh, so I'll have one keeper going for to take care of the caimans and then one keeper to take care of all the exhibits. And even as we, we put down more uh, South America exhibits, one keeper should be more than enough to handle all the exhibits. And I don't know how many of them there are, I haven't really looked, but it should be fine. It should be fine. The crime looks good. Uh, of course, I've got cameras everywhere. And right here, I'm looking at what South America uh, habitats we can do next. I'd like to do some tortoises. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I think I'm going to wait on that. But we can do the giant ant eater. So that's what we'll do next. That's what we'll do next. Now, I want to say first off that the habitats that I put together here are very basic. Like super basic. The idea is just to get the animals to be content. And then we'll spruce them up, make them look really nice afterward. So put down a couple of habitats just to get the, the zoo to expand a little bit, give our customers something more to look at than just four exhibits and some caimans as, as majestic as they look. And then we'll go from there. Because hopefully at that point we'll have plenty of finances to work with. We don't have to be worried about spending a little extra money on one, on, on one particular tree or whatnot. We could just go for it. And of course, I'm going to do this in as many time lapses as possible, simply to keep the videos at a reasonable length. And of course, if you want uh, longer videos, you could always let me know in a comment. Um, if you like what you see so far, uh, I would love it if you would subscribe and even leave a comment, maybe even a like. And uh, any suggestions that you have are, are greatly appreciated. Right here, I'm just looking at some genes uh, on the genetics of each one of the animals. Uh, just whatever one's best. Thankfully, we have a male and a female av available. Not the greatest genetics, but they'll do. And hopefully, when they actually have little babies, uh, they'll have improved genetics from there. And you never know uh, if there's always one that has some great genetics uh, as, it, as it matures. I can always get a counterpart that will be a good match for it. 
But for right now, uh, I was going to work on the anteater exhibit, which is going to be a walk-in, because people, guests, can actually walk into the habitat, which is always fun. Uh, I wanted to have a walk-in habitat early on in the zoo, but being the fact that it was nighttime and it was raining, it was really hard to see, so I decided to just undo what I did and then just go from there afterward. I've got a really cool idea that I do want to implement later on when our finances are better. Of course, before daytime it had to start snowing. Our, our caimans are not going to be happy with that. They don't like the cold, they don't like the snow, so I'm, I just lay out a whole bunch of heaters. Um, it'll help out our guests too, because I don't know about you, but I don't like my guests shivering because they're, they're here to have a fun time. And nobody has fun shivering. So there we go. Even with snow, came in our happy. Lay out a few more heaters here. And I love the fact that the that the guests are using the 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 uh, benches and the uh, the tables. Okay, now if we can get back to the exhibit or the habitat. So again, just doing something super simple. I also want to make sure that it stays out of the out of the uh, affecting area of the staffing buildings. Don't need any negative feedback from that. Uh, I don't. I, I wish I could have a larger entrance, but we'll just deal with what we got. Uh, big walking area for for a guest to be able to just browse around at the anteaters. So wherever the anteaters are, the guests can walk up to them. Of course, gonna have a shelter. And I was actually kind of surprised that size of a shelter was not large enough, but no big deal. And of course, gotta have donation bins. Uh, so far, uh, I've, I think, I think some. I, I'm kind of suspicious on whether or not guests will know if there are updates to the habitats. I think only the new ones that come in might, or it just takes time to register. I'm not sure. But of course, I have to place more heaters here as well, because again, these are South America animals and they don't like snow. I don't blame them. I like snow, but they don't. It's okay. I also noticed that uh, that people were not using the bathroom, even though it's, the guests would say that they need a loo, yet they weren't using it, so I just moved it. I thought it, at first it was an issue with the price, but it... It wasn't. And just checking up to see donations. I hadn't... So, one thing that I should have done, and I didn't do, I don't know why I spaced it, but the guests are just throwing trash everywhere. They can't just wait. They can't wait to get out of the exhibit. I was hoping that the guests, not that they would know better, because it's simulation, but uh, you'd think that if guests go into a habitat, they would walk out before they throw anything away, but apparently not. So they were just being little monsters, throwing trash all over the place, and of course that affects the happiness of the of the guests' experience altogether. And I'm sure the animals don't like the trash everywhere either, so I just, I get another keeper, uh, or another caretaker. I needed another one anyway. And uh, so that way uh, we'd have two and as as the obviously as the zoo expands I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna have to hire more caretakers anyway. So it gives me an opportunity to tr to uh, to train one at some point as well. So I'm trying to place donation bins where I see people congregate to watch the giant anteaters and of course they're everywhere but
I do think it's I do think it's funny that it seems like they're looking at an animal like in the uh, lower left side but there's not one there <laughs> that's the funniest thing and then I noticed that one of them is stressed and I, th and I was thinking to myself but they're confident around people people are allowed into the exhibits the only thing that would make sense is that there are too many people around so what I decided to do is just move everyone out out of the habitat and then just scale down the the pathing area that way they can still be inside of the exhibit I can actually focus more on where the bins go because everyone doesn't just go all over the place and the anteaters don't have to be stressed out if they feel like there's too many people around they can just walk away it's no big deal and that seemed to work out and of course they had to throw more trash around all over the place so grabbed another another caretaker and I threw him in there. And he just walked by. Like, oh, I don't see the trash there. So I had to grab him again. <laughs> and then I moved him further back, and that seemed to fix the problem. I just noticed that I didn't put the... Uh, the new feeding tray down so the uh, the keeper just put the food on the ground not a big deal but something we definitely want to fix and there's no water supply right there either so I fixed that up too and I put some more security signs in the form of do not disturb that should help with the stress level as well and I put a loop around the path because I think if just in case we start getting some really big numbers uh, they can walk all the way around and there won't be nearly as much of a pathing issue for all of our guests definitely necessary Yeah, that should do I thought about putting down some plants, but again, I'm, I'm gonna spruce this up. It's gonna look really nice eventually For now right now. We just want to get the animals to be content and then we'll just go from there so now we're actually at almost $12,000 and, and we actually started out with only five. So we're making, we're making progress. We're making progress. I feel good about training all of our, our, all of our vendors, our caretakers, and eventually we can start looking at, uh, at uh, training our keepers and our vets and stuff like that as well. Super basic. It's not going to look anything like this when I'm done with it in the future. See, so far we've we've got some money coming in from them. It's good. Not a lot, but I also haven't spent a lot on this yet. No, 360 is not bad. 360 is not bad. But again, we, had, we didn't really spend too much money on this, so it's okay. But the crowds are starting to come in, so they're attracting attention, which means that we should be getting quite a few donations here just shortly. See, now this is where I'd also notice that we, that, uh, and this is something I didn't know until I watched somebody else's video. But after researching staff facilities, uh, which I did in one of my other uh, practice runs in franchise mode, is you can actually set up perks. And, I, and, it, it, and if I remember correctly, I set the perk up for this 
this uh, break room so that way our keepers don't uh, don't get tired as quickly and with the other one the one next to the vendors I did more of a uh, uh, I, I did I did the one that allows for customers to be happier with interacting with the vendors it just made sense because they're buying food and for a while um, when I was in my practice runs on the franchise mode I couldn't figure out why customers were not happy even with five-star vendors and turns out it's because they didn't ha I didn't set up perks in the break rooms so it's a good tip in case you play the game and you were wondering the same thing apparently that's it so just a little little tip there for you Yep, starting to get uh, quite a few people in there. It's good. I like it. Even as basic as this is, I'm still, yeah, I'm still pretty content with it. Looks like we got our caretakers doing what they need to do. I don't see any more trash on you know, on the ground in the habitat anymore. That's fantastic. And I'm just checking on the health of our caimans because I haven't looked at them for a little bit. And money's coming in you know, pretty nice for, for the exhibits. Exhibits are are, uh, are a little something. I mean, the, the exhibit itself costs $3,000. It's it's quite an investment to start out with, but it really starts to pay off. Really glad that I, that, that we decided to uh, go with having the exhibits inside of the uh, walk through the mountain. And right here, uh, I decided to add a second entry gate. That way, people can actually walk through, look at the uh, look at the giant ant eater, and then head to straight to the next exhibit. Just seemed nice and efficient that way. So here I'm looking at what other South American habitat we can work on next. So I'm looking at the giant otter. The giant otter looks like a really good, a really good option. If I remember correctly, they're high attraction, which is also great. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with the giant otter. Another one, surprise, that I have not done before. But look at how cute they are. Look at that smile. That is fantastic. So I also I, I want to keep each one of these exhibits close to the central facility point for the staff members. I also want to keep the research going on each one of the exhibits. The faster we can get through the exhibit research, uh, the the easier it'll be. Faster the breed will make more money that way. Because uh, all of our guests will will. Uh, get more education that way and it'll just work out quite well. I did get an alert that I hadn't seen that our Cayman, exhibit, uh, Cayman habitat hadn't been visited by a veterinarian for quite a while and that's only because our vet has been doing research the entire time. <laughs> so I just hired another vet. We've got the money. We got $15,000. We can afford another vet even as expensive as they might be. And you'll notice uh, I've noticed that a lot of people will reduce the pay 
of each one of the employees down to the minimum to where they're happy. But I, I am a firm believer that a that a worker's worth is wages, so I just leave it alone. Um, so I have the second habitat laid out. Again, it's just a temporary, very basic for our giant uh, our, our giant otters. Now, unfortunately, they are only available by c conservation credits. That's okay, though. I've got over 4,000 of those as well from previous practices, and I think I've actually earned quite a bit since the start of this zoo as well. So it's just about finding which one we want based on stats and cost overall. This one's a good one, so I decided to, uh, to, to uh, adopt that one. Obviously not the one that's 10,000. Not sure why that was 10,000. But this female's pretty good, so we'll just go with that one. So the next step is just to get them in the zoo. See if we can dub, uh, see, see if we can get both of these in at the same time. Last time I wasn't able to, but it looks like this time we can. So we'll just get them into the zoo real quick. And as, as after that, we can at least do the bare minimum to make them happy. Put some windows on the walls. And some more bins, because as you saw earlier, people are filthy. And I just went with the conservation bins this time. Now one thing I noticed is that otters love to swim. Obviously, they need deep water. Not just being able to swim, but they need deep water. So I worked on that for quite a while, and that seemed to do the trick. And they don't like a lot of long grass. They like some, but not, not a huge amount. Got to make sure to have enough sand as well. Very important. And that's the last thing that we need is for the, the sand. Obviously, we need to put in enrichment items. Uh, a feeder of some sort. I think I'll go with the, the, the fish feeder. And again, just something real basic. Just enough. And it's not going to look anything like this by the time we're done with it. In the next, probably in the next session. We'll spruce this up. Because the otter is a high attraction. So we want to make sure it looks good. Put some education down. Make sure it doesn't overlap with any other speakers. And place them... I'm just temporarily placing them in the same work zone. But we'll fix that eventually. And of course you gotta put a mud bath in because I think it's adorable when animals play in a mud bath. And of course immediately one does. So we gotta check that out as well. So that immediately made our giant otters the main attraction in the zoo. And look how adorable. That is fantastic. Yeah, you! Should rename him Wiggles. Well, that was a quick turnaround. Okay, we got some more research done. Okay. Uh, we should probably research otters soon, but I do want to get these up to uh, two star on their research, all the uh, exhibits, so I can keep the layouts uh, better than in the yellow for all of our exhibits. So, not, not quite as uh, time consuming of a video this time. I think I spent about an hour and a half. I think it might have been a little bit longer than that. I think it might have been closer to two hours in this session. I just wanted to get a couple of habitats up so that way our zoo expands a bit, our guests have something more to look at. Uh, 
not crazy over the Otter Exhibit or the Anteater Exhibit. They are very basic and that's okay, like I keep saying. Things are going to change more quickly. More quickly. But that's about it. Thank you for watching. And I'll have another one up either tomorrow or the next day. So be on the lookout. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Love others as you love yourself. And I'll see you next time.